Welcome to a new show that's going to have less than 10 episodes, probably. Um, it is Max Ideas. So this is where I get my ideas from my head onto paper. Now, what do I mean by Max Ideas? Well, if you're new to the channel or whatever, then uh, in downtown Portland, Oregon, we have our light rail network known as the Metropolitan Area Express, the MAX. And it travels people throughout the city and throughout the surrounding cities carrying hundreds of thousands of people a day. It's a very important network. And this series gets ideas from my head onto paper. So the first one that you'll see here, I've called it the Retro Ride. Now what is the Retro Ride? Well, it's an idea that I have for the future. Now, starting as early as next year, the Type 6 vehicles are supposed to enter service. They're supposed to be delivered to Portland and they're supposed to enter service next year. We are for sure getting 34 vehicles. 26 of these are going to replace our Type 1s which have been in service since 1986. Then we're going to be getting eight more for the Red Line project, which I might do a video on later. In a couple of years, all 26 Type 1s are going to be completely retired. So what do we do with them? Now I say that TriMet can do whatever they want to with these train cars, but I say you need to keep at least five, six, maybe more of them. Store them in Ruby Junction and make sure they don't fall to complete disrepair. Um, they are going to be retired, but you still want to make it so that they're not, you know, abandoned forever. Um, becomes one with nature, you know. Um, but I say, you know, if you keep five or six of them, let's say you kept six of them, you can still sell 20 other train cars to whoever else wants them. I'm not sure who would want them but I'm sure somebody would want them. Um, so, it would be a lot better than scrapping them because, number one, these vehicles cost a lot back in the day. Number two, um, TriMet, you just finished upgrading so many of these vehicles. Starting in the 2000s, the Type 1s went through this large updating process to replace the seats, replace the windows and the doors and repainting them and doing all this stuff and then in 2014, 15 and 16 going through a major project to put in electronic destination signs and redoing other things just to retire them seven years after that the very last train car to be redone was number 112 and that was completed in 2018 I think Seriously, what? 2018? They're going to be retired from 2018. They got five years left at most. What's the point? So you got to keep some of them. I mean, some of these train cars ride and function and look brand new inside. I say what you do is you keep them in good repair and keep them there even if you don't run them. Then here's my idea for the future. Now you're going to have to excuse the drawing because it kind of looks like the train's been in an oven, but here's my idea. This is the train car, it's, whoa, this is the train car itself. You have the original paint stripes. So this would be something that you would paint onto the original train. So, or onto the train. So you'd want the original paint stripes and you could put somewhere on there that it's retro ride or something. And what you'll do is you'll couple two of the type ones together. This is, again, this is an event in the future for people who want to see what the original trains were like after they've been retired. Well, here's what you do. Again, you take them, you repaint them with the old stripes so that it looks like how it did when they rolled into Portland in the 80s. Then, you'll end up coupling two of these together, so there will be two Type 1s. Now, this is the one downfall of this event. It is not wheelchair accessible. but there are many places around the world, many heritage streetcar systems around the country and around the world, really, that do not have a wheelchair accessible system. They're more used as a tourist attraction, and so you can get away with it. New York has 
well, really, New York is interesting because most of their subway and elevated system is not wheelchair accessible in the first place. Most stations underground or above ground don't have elevators. So, and they've, they've been just fine for all this time. So having one event not wheelchair accessible like this, I think you'd be fine um, doing that. Now, there are some other things that you would need to do to these train cars to make them like they were originally. And they're very, very, very easy. The repainting process is actually one of the most difficult things you'd have to do. The other thing that you would have to do is you remove the skirts by the wheels. You see how you can see the wheels here? I actually think you're supposed to remove these too. And then there's one there. Well, yeah, you remove those. You literally just remove the skirts to expose the wheels. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, take a look at these pictures. You notice how there's these big chunks that are taken out from the Type 1s by the doors? Those are the wheels. They used to be just exposed like that. Then, when the Type 2s came out, they had skirts over everything. And so they decided, oh, well, we better cover those up so that it better matches our newer trains. And so that it's less of a hazard of people getting their hands or feet caught in there. Not that I ever heard of that happening. But, um, yeah, so you'd have to remove those so that it looked more like it did back in the 80s. Now, you could probably figure this out later, but you'd probably any want to keep anywhere from four to six of the vehicles, but you wouldn't need to run all of them. You could keep a couple of them just for use for parts, so that way if something goes wrong, then you can use the parts. I've heard that, well, the parts are getting hard to find, and so we're unable to complete three of the Type 1s for anything. So basically like what I'm saying is while they were going through this process of updating all the Type 1s, they were still unable to get through three of them. These are those train cars, 102, 103, and 116. So if you get on one of those nowadays, well, they're, they're in their original state other than the electronic destination signs, and I believe they replaced the HVAC on those as well. Now the route that this would take would be the original MAX route from Cleveland Avenue to the turnaround in Portland, the 11th Avenue turnaround. Now, there's one issue, and it would be how would you get the trains into Cleveland Avenue and Gresham? When one of the tracks are freed up, you could use the tail track at Cleveland Avenue and park it back there, and then the next time the track is empty, you just pull the train straight through, pull it into Cleveland Avenue, and then go all the way through. So basically, the trains would be stored in the tail tracks behind another train, and then when, they, when the train in front of them leaves, then the retro ride train comes in and goes all the way through. Um, and it would, again, it would run on the original route from Gresham to downtown Portland. And it would just be a tourist attraction for people who want to see the old trains. I'm telling you, people like old trains. Now these trains would only run on special events, and I'm talking special events. Now, in the year 2036, the MAX is going to turn 50 years old. That is a big day. So on that day and on that weekend or whatever, we should be able to see these trains. They are, at the, at the time of that, they will have been about 14 or 15 years retired. Now, there could be some other events, too. You could, in fact, run these every weekend throughout summer. So, every, like, 30 minutes throughout the summer months, um, or whatever, have this as your tourist attraction, Cleveland Avenue to downtown Portland. And it would run on its original route, and I know it would attract people. Because, well, people, again, like I said, people like old trains. You would have them running, and you'd have them going on their original route on the weekends during the summer months, and you'd have a special event during Christmas time. So throughout the whole month of December, I guess we'll say the day after Black Friday, or the weekend after Black Friday, all the way up until the weekend after Christmas Day, um, that whole time would be the December runs of these trains, so your Christmas time runs. But there'd be a difference, because the trains would be decorated. So where the coupler head is, you'd put a wreath of some kind up by the coupler head. Inside the train, where the windows are, you could string a garland across there, or maybe some Christmas lights across the windows. Um, 
Not sure if you'd want to go all out and go all fancy like the Polar Express and start serving hot chocolate or something, but you could totally do it. Um, just have them all decorated, just have them all nice for Christmas time every time. So if people want to go out there during those times and see them decorated, then there you go. It's an option. Now the destination signs in the in the center windows here would switch between a few things. So it'd start with Retro Ride to tell you that this event is the Retro Ride. Then, it, oh, and these are supposed to be a picture of a rose. <laughs> um, then it would switch to City of Roses. Why? Well, I'm not really sure how I'm going to be able to find a very good picture of this. But, okay, the Type 1 roll signs, the original ones, they were hand cranked. So you had to, to do it manually. And so having all these roll signs per train car, it would take forever to do anything. And so they would leave the middle ones on City of Roses with the picture of a rose like that so that they could just leave it there the whole time and they wouldn't have to change it. And then the third thing it would switch to is either Gresham or Portland, depending on where it's going. Now you could do some more things that are like the old days, like really old days. And I, I'm going to provide a link in the description to a video talking about this, or to a video showing this. But the Max had a door chime. So and it used to not have any programmed announcements. The driver would have to make the announcements himself. And so there would be two chime noises to tell you that the door was closing. And there would be chime noise telling you that the intercom was turning on and the driver would say what he's about to say. Well, I figure I might as well just show you the video and show you the chime noise that I'm talking about. Listen to the, it's two chimes and that's when the door closes. And that was it. It was just two simple chime noises. So you could somehow put that in there. I'm not sure. See, here's the thing. When the Type 1s were being updated to put in these new electronic display signs, they also replaced the announcement system and did all this kind of stuff. And so I'm not really sure if any of these sounds are still built into the Type 1s somehow, if you could access very old technology that's been unused for decades. Um, these sounds might still be in there somewhere. Um, and then you have the intercom chime as well. <laughs> and the whistling of the trains. There's a lot to take in in this video because you can see it's clearly just a single track here and it hasn't been like that in forever. And um, the whole having to signal for your stops, obviously because of the amount of people that would be attracted to this event, you would not need to request for your stop um, like you would have to back in the day. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you wanted to include any of that, then you could. If you wanted to re make the seats red again, like they were when they were first delivered to Portland, then that would be a nice thing, too. But all of that really just sounds like kind of re-overhauling the trains to be back to their original state, which maybe that's too much work. But I say for sure the minimum would be, well, repaint them to their old stripes, get rid of the skirts there for the where the wheels are, just like they were back then. Um, and that's, that's all you would need to do. And just make sure that they stay in a state of good repair. Have two, you know, you couple two of these retro ride train cars together, and then maybe have another one of those, so there'd be two sets of two train cars. But keep one or two extras as well for use for parts, in case something goes wrong, um, so that you can if one breaks down, it's not screwed forever. Now, there is a... The, Wikipedia has updated a lot of new information on the Type 1s, including the fact that they were going to get seven? I think they were going to purchase seven more, but they decided to drop out on that at the last minute and just stick with having 26 Type 1s. So we could have actually ended up with 33 Type 1s having extras, but they decided to not do that. But anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. So there was another topic that relates to this, but I'm going to talk about it on its own episode next time. And so I will see you on the next one.